Yo, what up, YouTube? This your boy, Food Drugs. We're coming at you with another video. You know what I'm saying? And y'all know what this is about. Y'all know what just went down. Y'all know what people was talking about. You know what's on the corner of everyone's tongue, the tip of everyone's tongue, and the corner of everyone's mouth. Yeah, we're going to talk about it tonight. We're going to talk about this tonight. Okay. As y'all already know, may have probably guessed, I don't mention names. Not because I'm scared, not because I don't want the smoke, so to say. Because the individual is not important. The story is important. The lessons learned is what is, what is important. You can interject anyone or inject anyone into the, the place of certain characters and the story will be the same. You have an insecure person, upset, because a group of secure people can do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. Here comes the spy to infiltrate said secure people. But are they really a spy? Are they really part of the cool kids? Part of the in crowd? Listen to the story and you be the judge. <laughs> So let's talk about it. Like I said, you have a group that has been on the tip of everyone's tongue, good, bad, and otherwise. For what reason? For the mere fact that the group decided as a collective not to support anyone who does not support them. Sounds feasible, right? If you don't support me, I can't support you. If you don't have my best interest at heart, I cannot deal with you anymore. So I choose to ignore you. I choose to treat you as if you're not there. I choose to treat you as what you are, a non-entity in my life. But you choose to be a thorn in my side, a pebble in my shoe, that's like irritant. No matter how many times I put, take, take the pillow off my shoe, somehow it finds itself back in my shoe. This time, the pebble is disguised as a friend. But really, they're only a friend to the foe. So, this group chooses to go on an excursion, a trip, and everyone has a great time. But as you know, while everyone's having a good time, that pebble wears their ugly head once again on this trip. Like I said, it's a small pebble, an irritant, nothing to even be concerned about, because as you know, Every time there's a group, there's bound to be one or two people who don't get along or like each other. But they're not getting along or liking each other. You can be adult enough to go along to make sure and maintain that there's not going to be any kind of craziness going on within the group. So that what happens. The party commences, the group have a great vacay, great excursion, all the while not knowing that the pebble was still in their shoe. The pebble made such little noise, was such a small irritant, that no one thought twice about removing the pebble from their shoe. Not only was a pebble in their shoe, the pebble was placed in their shoe by a disgruntled ex-friend, confidant, acquaintance of several members of the group. And while the group was on the excursion, the ex-friend, ex-confidant, ex-associate, ex-acquaintance, 
equate was bad mouthing several members of his group, not understanding why no one paid their way to the excursion. I deserve to go too, they said. Why did they pick her to drag on this excursion? Why did they pick her? It should have been me. I'm worthy too. I'm someone as well. But you know, their pleas, their cries went on Death's ear because the group was having too much fun amongst each other, still not suspecting that the pebble was taking notes, jotting down every little aspect of what was going on. So when the group came back, there was hell to pay by the rivals of this group. While the rivals and ex friend, confidant, acquaintance were getting into bed together, the pebble was leaking little bits of information to the group's rivals and ex confidant, acquaintance, friend about what had happened on this excursion. I was there when this happened. I was there when that happened. I was there when she said this. Ooh, and he did that. And, ugh. Ugh. This is gonna hurt. <laughs> and you know why. Well, no, it won't hurt. When the head of this group Adult child had the fun. This pebble was taking notes. This pebble was watching and waiting, wanting the head of this group's son to visit them in their chambers. So maybe they can have a little excursion of their own outside the preview of the group themselves. But it didn't happen. The pebble got really, really upset and said the same thing as the ex confidant, the ex friend, the ex associate said, Why not me? I'm worthy too. I'm just as pretty as she is. The pebble said to herself, And for that, you all must pay. You all must pay, the pebble said. So, not only did the was the pebble sent by the ex friend, confidant, associate, now she had motive to tell, to spy, to deliver the messages that the ex confidant asked her to deliver. At first, she was wavering. At first she was like, no, but they're my friends. I've grown to like them. Please, don't let me do this. But after the non-existent tryst, the head son, she was bitter. How dare you scorn me? How dare you? I am worthy as well. I'm just as pretty, just as beautiful, just as full of life and love to give to you. Why didn't you accept it? Why haven't you accepted me for who I am? Because I was busy living and enjoying my life, the head son said. start to be, become more intense. So not soon as the planes touched down, 
her foot hit the, her home soil. Phone calls are being made. Stories are being told. And the ex confidant, the ex friend, the ex associate put his plan into motion. The plan was since you didn't take me to Vegas, I'm sorry, not Vegas, since you didn't take me on your excursion with you. <laughs> I'm so fucking silly, y'all. <laughs> so fucking silly. <laughs> you to take me on your excursion, you must pay. Now, how am I going to make you pay? First, let me attack you head on. So the next friend, the next confidant, the next associate, start throwing arrows and sticks and stones at the head. But the head, I was placing forward, looking forward towards their future that was clearly brighter than the past. So, the hand kept his head forward, kept his eyes focused on the light that was in front of him, leaving behind all the ugliness and darkness that the ex-friend tried to bring on some of them. The hand was asked by many, yo, what's going on? Why aren't you fighting back? Why aren't you defending yourself? The head simply smiled and with a coy expression on his face said, you don't compete where you don't compare. If you know that they are a nothing ass bitch, why must I tell them you are a nothing ass bitch? Why should I stoop to their level and read them for filth? The best revenge is your paper. Shout out to Beyonce! Woo woo! <laughs> so, with an ex-friend, ex-confidant, ex-associate, started to realize it's not going to work attacking them head on. I must find something that I feel will bring them out of their shell so they can be seen attacking me. So they scoured the village, scoured their lands. Who can I team up with? Who can I associate myself with in order for me to knock him off his game? Aha! Said the ex-friend, ex-associate, ex-confidant. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So they went to a place in the dark forest and called out, Hello, evil one. Hello, evil one. I come bearing gifts. I come bearing gifts to you, evil one. You, my liege, will be proud of me. I know you have threatened me in the past. We have had our differences. But now we have a common enemy. Let me befriend you. Let me stand by you. As we both try to take this individual down, they say. She thought about it as she pulled her box braids to the back. One fell out. She picked it up and rebraided it in her hair. Threw it off her shoulder and said, Ah, oh, let me think. With one eyebrow raised, dark as can be, black as night, her eyes are. She peered down her long face at him and said, I think we have a plan. Tell me what you know. Give me all the receipts. Give me all the receipts. I love a good receipt. So 
he just graciously, graciously bowed to her, spilling his guts, telling him, ev telling her everything that the pebble had told him. This went on for hours as the evil one, the dark one, with the box braids, smiled and grinned, smiling to herself, saying, "Now I got him. Now he will go down." Now he will go down. I know I haven't washed my pussy yet, but now he will go down. Now he will go down. I will take him down and all of his subjects with them. So after the stories was told, the laughter, the chucks and chuckles was had. They devised the plan. They devised the plan. The plan was. Let's mess with him. Let's toy with him. He would be a cat. It would be the kibble. He would be the cat. We would be the ball of yarn. We're gonna play with him. We're gonna toy with him. We're gonna twist him and turn him. Just to tease him. So they did that for a couple of weeks. Until they realized the head paid them no mind. The head had his own plan. Plan to bring beauty and love and light into the world. The head realized that you can only allow people to treat you the way you want to be treated. And if they do not abide by your rules pertaining to how you want to be treated, you discard them, you ignore them, which makes them more upset. Blood started to boil in a dark forest. Blood started to boil with the ex friends until they came to a feverish pitch. So one day they came together on a call. Ex friends, she said. Yes, Dark Lord, he said. Let's do this. Let's gather our factions together to come against the head. The head is too vain, the head is too pompous. The head must go down. So one is gathered together. Ex-confidant, ex-friend, ex-associate, and the dark one. They start to tell a story, explain a well, thinking they're dropping tea when only they're doing is exposing who was the pebble. Who was the pebble in the shoe of the group? Who was the pebble? As the words start to unfold, as the stories start to be untold, the people realize, oh my God, the group isn't dumb. The group's gonna know it's me. The group is going to know it's me. So what do the people do? I must banish myself. I must go into a cave and remove myself from the group and make sure they can never find me again. Because if they find me, what will they do to me? What will they do to me, the pebble said. What will they do to me? The head, and one of his very, very, very smart and faithful, came to the conclusion. Oh, that sounds very familiar. I remember that conversation. I remember that situation. But it didn't go down like that, they said. What should we do? What should we do? The gracious, kind hand. Don't worry about it. Let it go. I'll take care of it, he said. The faithful said, No, I must address this. I must speak on this. I cannot let this go unpunished or unspoken on by me. Do what you must, the head said. But don't allow them to distract you from our goals, from our plans. So the faithful made a proclamation. I'm going to start reading all you bitches, she said. All you bitches will be mine. 
Of course I'm making my own little flourish in here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Then, as the head and the faithful scurry this information highway of the pebble, they realized they were blocked. All was not revealed until all was revealed. So people were talking, there were rumblings in all across the land. The pebble was non existent anymore hidden in her cave. The Dark One and its friend, confidant, associate. Let's call them the Broke One. Thought they have won. Thought that the plan was followed and coming together. Mind you, while they were coming through this plan, um, lavishing in their works, lavishing in what they thought they have done, the head was getting attacked from all types of ways but the head being the head had a smile on her face because they know he knew they know not what they do they know not what they do several days later the pebble reappeared and made her own proclamation I will not apologize for anything that I've done or been accused of doing. The only thing I will admit to is that I spoke to my friend. Okay, Pebble. You have spoken to your friend. The same friend that you knew was an ex-friend of the head. That was an ex-confidant, ex-associate of the head. And while this ex-friend of the head was dragging the head, you knew this, and you knew what you have done. But instead of being gracious and innocent and fun-loving, you chose to keep quiet and let it all unfold. At any point in time, over the two-month period, Before this all came to a head, Pebble, you could have said, Did I? I must declare something to you. I must let you know that I have wronged you by accident. It was me, it was I who have spoken to my friend about what happened on our excursion. Please forgive me. I apologize. I never knew it was going to go this far. I felt that I was talking to a friend. I felt that the friend I was talking to would not do this to me. They also betrayed me. But no, you kept quiet, smiling secretly, hoping that someone would get dragged. Hoping that the person that you called a friend that was an ex-friend, confidant, associate of the head, would do exactly what you wanted them to do. Drag the head, chop it off, let it stuck on a post. But you forgot to realize the head has a protective shield around them, an angelic shield and an earthly shield that will protect the head at all costs, as long as the head is doing right. So, as the pebble made her proclamation, turned off all comments, and went back to obscurity, the kingdom was left wondering what's going on. So the head being as gracious as he is, came to the people and said, there was a pebble in our shoe on our, on our trip. The pebble has grown close to two 
lovely, beautiful women that was part of our group and betrayed them, betrayed us, betrayed me. How could she? While the pebble went long, just to get along, the group was left wondering, why would you do this to us? We have taken you in. We have loved you. We have showered you with graciousness and love and respect. Was it all for naught? Was it all for naught? You've asked us personal questions. You gave us personal stories. Was it all for naught? Was it all for naught? The group wondered. How could I ever, ever let someone else into the group again? But rumblings start to happen. It's okay. It's okay. Didn't break us. Didn't hurt us. Didn't keep us from doing what we were meant to do. There was just one pebble. We're on this journey together. We're on this road together. And before we reach our destination, there are bound to be a pebble, a stumble, a fall. All we have to do is remove the pebble, continue forward, pick ourselves up, continue forward, brush off the dirt and dust, and keep ourselves going forward. And we will reach the destination that we were meant to reach as a group. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses. That's why we're together to build each other up, to hold each other up, to lift each other up. And that's why they hate us over there in the dark forest and over there with the brokenness. We have darkness and brokenness who hates us because we're light. We shine bright. So, live in the light that we are. Flourish in the light that we are. Don't let pebbles and falls and scrapes and bumps and bruises hurt us. Because we're on a journey. And as long as we are respectful and have integrity and be mindful of each other, we're going to get there together. Yes. And as they continue on their journey, they're going to run into scrapes, bumps, and bruises, stumbles, trips, and falls, more pebbles. But guess what? As long as they understand that together they can get through anything the group will be okay the group will be just fine as long as you stick to your moral standing and your integrity as far as the dark one and the broke one they're out there somewhere there will always be a broke one there will always be a dark one but as long as you keep your head on a swivel, you can point them out. You will see them coming. Because they play the same games. Use the same tricks. Infiltrate the same way. But sooner or later, the truth reveals itself. Yeah. That was the story of the head. The pebble, the darkness, and the brokenness. Hope you enjoyed it. And as I always say, love yourself. Love someone else. Respect yourself. And respect someone else. Until next time, this is Food Junkie, and I'm out. Peace.